Hi everybody, welcome back. Thanks for tuning in again. We're going to look today at Psalm 3. You remember we'd already looked at the first couple of Psalms which together comprise an introduction to the Psalms as a whole. They're bracketed of course by references to blessed at the beginning of Psalm 1, blessed at the end of Psalm 2. So the blessed man is the man who does what's in the book of Psalms. He will, Psalm 1, meditate on the law of the Lord. He will, Psalm 2, kiss the son. That is, he will show reverence for the king of the people of God. So then what Psalm 3 starts to do is to unfold what that will look like in practice. What will it look like in practice for a blessed man to meditate on the law of the Lord and submit to the son, the king of the people of God? Psalm 3 announces the first new major theme. Here it is. O Lord, how many are my foes? Many are rising against me. Perhaps a surprise, but the first major theme in the book of Psalms after the introduction is that the godly man, the godly woman, cries out to God in the wor- in a world which is in distress, in a world which is not as it ought to be. This psalm, of course, comes from a very specific situation. If you look at the superscription before verse 1, this ought to be regarded as part of the inspired text of scripture it's in the original it's in the hebrew manuscripts that we've got it's been preserved for us um, this tells us the setting a psalm of david that, that is by david when he fled from absalom his son and so this takes us back to first samuel 15 where all the hearts of the men of israel went out uh, to absalom and david and uh, those few hundred who were with him fled into the wilderness from uh, absalom for fear of their lives So it has a very specific initial setting, but in the psalm as a whole, that setting appears at one or two points to be left behind in favour of a more general plea to God for help. This is designed not just to be prayed by King David in the wilderness, in other words. This is designed to be prayed uh, by the people of God in general. And this is an important principle when we're thinking about the book of Psalms. We will encounter many specific scenarios in, in this book, and you know many of these yourselves. But these scenarios are not intended to limit the applicability of the Psalms in which they occur. They are designed as kind of typological examples of the kinds of situations in which we might find ourselves and in which we might cry out to God in praise or for help and so on and so forth. So that's um, how it begins. Now, just uh, one other thought um, about how it comes to a conclusion. Well, actually, no, a couple of thoughts. Verse 7 is the one that trips up um, some commentators and um, some who read the psalm because it looks like a a fairly uh, brutal and uh, unseemly prayer, doesn't it? Save me, O my God, for you strike all my enemies on the jaw, you break the teeth of the wicked. One's first reaction to that might be a certain amount of surprise, and we're going to come to uh, some more prayers like that in the next few Psalms, and we'll think about the place and the significance of such prayers, prayers of cursing or imprecation, when we get to them. But I want to highlight something that's particular to Psalm 2, which is a clue about how David, and therefore how we, might find hope in times of distress such as this. You notice in verse 2 that what David says many are saying is there's no salvation for him in God. They speak of God generically. Whereas in verse 7 and verse 8, David calls on the Lord specifically. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God. And then verse 8, salvation belongs to the Lord, echoing the language of salvation from verse 2, but making his claim specific. David, in other words, is not simply appealing to some abstract being. He's not appealing to a higher power. He's not even appealing just to God generically. He's appealing to the Lord, to Yahweh, to the covenant God of Israel. He's calling upon him to fulfil his promises to him, which he has Uh, made to him and to his forefathers, promises which have been fulfilled for us in our Lord Jesus Christ, on the basis of which we can call on that God, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who has filled us with his spirit, our triune God. We do not call upon deity generally. We do not call upon a higher power generally. 
we call upon this specific God who's made himself known to us in history, in our history, to our forefathers, to our elder brother, our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom all the fullness of deity dwells personally and bodily and to whom we are invited and called to turn. Let that encourage you as you face trials, whether or not they look like the kinds of trial that David faced here. God bless you and look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye for now.